What's going on, Music Junkie? This is Balcony TV Los Angeles. I'm your host, Nick Stubbs. We're here at Live Nation in Hollywood with Ruth Ann. How's it going? Hi, how are you? Thank, um, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Thanks for coming all across the pond. No problem. Yeah, all the way from Ireland. Absolutely. <laughs> Love the accent. Thanks. What are you going to be singing for us? I'm going to sing my uh, new single that's out May 11th called Take My Place. Sounds good. Go for it. Trying to turn off my phone it's keeping me up I've been looking searching pictures and there's so many of her she is prettier than I thought she would be see she's from your hometown is she giving you all what you need are you gonna keep Baby, tell me, are you touching her like you love her tonight? Oh, tell me, I deserve to know, even though I have no right. Oh, oh, oh. is she the one who's lighting up your
Talk <laughs> about a soulful little song there. My sunglasses were falling down the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just a little bit of uh, adaptive. Just the real stuff. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So I want to really talk about this song because you are actually and have always been a songwriter, and now you're really coming out and saying, this is my writing, but this is also my voice. Yes, it's time. I've written for a lot of different people for a lot of years, and most people I work with even are like, why, don't, why aren't you an artist? And I think it just took me a while to find my lyrical perspective and have... I needed to get screwed over a bit in L.A. to to go write songs about it. Wait, people screw people over in L.A.? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Just just a little bit. I don't believe you. (laughs) This is, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. I never dated in L.A. and I got, I just met a lot of Hollywood fuckboys, to be honest. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe you could be the next fuckboy. We don't know. I mean, listen, I'm kind of dumb with fuckboys, but if you're a nice boy, I'll take I'll take the call. Oh, there you go. Well, I'm actually Southern and from Nashville, and if I want to, I can throw in that accent mighty finely. I see. I'm sure there's Nashville fuckboys, too, out there. Oh, there, are, there might <laughs> no, be a few. I, I like Nashville. Oh, that's the other thing that I love about you and being that you actually are a writer because the writing that goes on in Nashville is extremely powerful, and, of course, in here as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just cool to actually, like, when you see someone's writing, when they write for other big artists, and then they actually come out and say, this is who I am. And sometimes that just takes time to be like, you know what, I'm really not ready for this, but I know it will come when it's ready. Yeah, I think it was a journey and a process. I think the type of artist I wanted to be was the artist that writes all her own material, whereas that's what I am for other artists. So it really took, it needed to come from me, so I needed to experience things. And I actually wrote this song, the song I just sang with Heidi, um, about who's one of my best friends about finding out that my ex was banging a playmate on Instagram. Oh. So it's very real. And so there's not a lot of artists who would be like, I'm going to take that song because it's my life because it was not. So I had to, it was like, all right, I just got to lay it out on the table and just be the artist now and, and tell the real stories. I mean, <laughs> honestly, like that's really, I mean, d- damn. I'm not, just just I, damn. But I really, let's but I got be, a song out of it. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. The big thing is, it's like, most people don't realize that the most pain that you experience is the most beautiful thing that you can actually turn into something great. Yeah, and I really wrote it for all the people out there who've experienced the same thing, because we're all secret Instagram stalkers. We yeah. all deep stalk. We get deep. <laughs> and we find out things that we... And, we, and then the, the song is about all the questions you ask yourself, because I didn't even really know what was going on, but from a picture, you can assume all these things, and that's what the song is. It's asking all There's those There's something questions. about a thousand words in a photo. <laughs> exactly. It's like... She's the one. I know she's the one. But really, when I talked to Matt, it was like, nah, like, it's, it didn't, you know, it doesn't last. But Almost for me that I would go as, uh, thank you for letting me know I don't need to share any more energy or time with you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That was what it was. So the song kind of wrote itself. And I took actual lines from other friends of mine that had the same thing. Like, she's prettier than I thought she would be. A friend said that to me about seeing her ex with a new girlfriend. And so I just took parts and tried to make it a real universal song because we all feel like replaced when that happens and it's amazing when you actually like let your phone down and see if people like get weird if you so go to for someone's phone you're like uh no no, no that's mine yeah you're like you are hiding something and we know it <laughs> yeah so it's about that real phone life <laughs> so go get it on may 11th Well, you know what? Also, if you don't mind commenting in the comments below with uh, your experiences of pain and your ability to actually like make something great about it and like be able to like say, hey, you know what? I'm not just a writer. I'm now an artist. Yeah, it was time for me to let my voice out there. And it's been uh, very welcomed. And if you want to check out more stuff, you should just go to all my socials. It's this is Ruthann with an E, R-U-T-H-A-N-N-E. This is Ruthann. Come see all my wacky other tortured love story life. Some of them are nice stories. (laughs) They're not and, all bad. And he might have a, uh, hopefully, I, what I personally want from you is a crazy story about the cabbies in Ireland because those people are the funniest cabbies I've ever encountered yes, in my entire they life. they want to talk to you forever. They're like, you know what, just drive. <laughs> I'm going to drink in yeah, the back. They'll probably have drink to give you. Oh, Irish absolutely. cab drivers are the best. But I'm they so really glad are. that you had good experiences with them. Oh, absolutely. We just said keep driving, actually. We're like, we're good. We don't need to go to a bar. You're entertainment for right now. <laughs> yeah. And the acts, they're like, oh, come on down to the bar and get a few drinks and yeah. <laughs> I feel like we almost need to do a jig or something. We can do a jig. <laughs> or we can do, yeah, I don't know how good I am at jigging anymore. I don't, I don't even remember. I can get jiggy, but I don't know if oh. I can Irish jig. No, I can Irish jig, but I don't know if I choose are you a, Are you getting punny on us right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm a songwriter. That's my job. Ooh. 
<laughs> well, thanks so much for the energy, and uh, so hopefully much. you'll have some like good experiences while you're in town and meet some guys that actually aren't on the uh, fuckboy status. Yes, hopefully. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Fingers, toes crossed, <laughs> arms crossed. Everything crossed. Well, thank nah, I'm done with the Hollywood boys now. I think I'm going to go back to my own land, like oh. UK, Irish boys, more my vibe. That know how to drink a proper beer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Thank you so much. This is Nick Stubbs reporting for Balcony TV Los Angeles. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.